Chapter 1.3.2 War vs. Law But why would nations prefer something as lethal and destructive as warfare to resolve international policy disputes when they have a far more energy-efficient option of peaceful adjudication through a court? The answer is quite simple. Because they don't trust, respect, or sympathize with the court. To borrow a concept from an anonymous software engineer, the root problem with peace is all the trust that is required to make it work. It's not easy to get a large population to come to consensus about what right means, much less what the right ruling is or the right rule of law is. It's even more difficult to expect large populations of people to trust their lawmakers not to abuse the abstract power and control authority given to them by the existing rule of law. It's perhaps even more difficult to trust people both inside and outside a given nation to sympathize with the nation's laws. History is full of breaches of the enormous amount of trust that is required to make law based societies function properly. The incontrovertible truth of the matter is that law-based societies break down because they are systemically vulnerable to corruption and invasion. This is one of the most <clears throat> beautiful topics. And I want to see if he gets to just how much it is about trust. Because you can talk about corruption and invasion when it comes to poor policies or the right rule of law or the, just the right thing to do in from in a, any governmental position in any given situation. It's about there not being <clears throat> a cost to their beliefs. It's easy to want peace. When you don't understand the cost benefit ratio it's not, it's not about it so it's not even beyond trusting people it's about trusting the ideology as well that they've chosen so let's continue <clears throat> rule of law is highly energy efficient cooperation protocol is a highly efficient energy Rule of law is a highly energy efficient cooperation protocol, especially for the purpose of establishing human dominance hierarchies, i.e. pecking order, and achieving consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of limited resources. Rule of law is particularly well suited for functions like property dispute adjudication. But law based societies aren't perfect. They come with substantial trade offs. Like all rule sets, laws are inherently inegalitarian. They create a ruling class and a ruled class. Laws are also trust-based. They only function properly when the ruling class can be trusted not to exploit the ruled class. When people can be trusted to follow the rules and when neighboring societies can be trusted to sympathize with their neighbor's rules, in other words, law-based societies are predisposed to systemic exploitation and abuse because they rely too much on trust in people who do not deserve to be trusted. Humans are apex predators. Trust in an apex predator not to attack or exploit a belief system is not a good security strategy, regardless of how energy efficient and non-destructive it looks. The intent of law is noble. But for reasons that are exhaustively explored in this thesis, the inegalitarian and trust-based nature of law, law-based society, ugh, the, the inegalitarian and trust-based nature of law-based social structures make them systemically insecure. Hence, every corrupt or oppress oppressive government to have ever existed. Law-based societies are prone to reach in a hazardous state over time, leading to substantial losses for their populations. Perhaps the ruling class finds a reason to systemically exploit the law, creating a state of oppression. 
Perhaps the ruled class finds a reason to stop following the law, create an anarchy. Perhaps a neighbor na nation finds a reason to be unsympathetic to their neighbor's laws, creating an invasion. 5,000 years of written testimony about law-based societies makes, thing, makes one thing very clear. They become dysfunctional over time. <clears throat> when law-based societies inevitably break down, war typically follows. Like law, war has its own trade-offs. War is highly energy intensive and destructive, but it's also egalitarian. Physical power makes no distinction between the ruling and ruled class. A king suffers the same from a sword through the heart as a peasant. Across history, kings and other high ranking people especially have a habit of losing their heads after losing wars. War is also zero trust. It doesn't, doesn't require trust to function properly. War is also unsympathetic to people's belief systems, thus completely impartial to them. Therefore, physical power competitions work the same regardless of what people believe and whether people are sympathetic to it. Damn. Are you getting the picture? Here we can see that law and war are remarkably complementary to each other in the sense that they represent almost perfectly opposite approaches to achieving the same end state. Together they form an interdependent system with opposing trade-offs. Law is an energy efficient and non-destructive way for society to settle disputes and establish a dominance hierarchy, but it requires people to adopt common belief systems that are highly inadequate in egalitarian and trust-based, making them demonstrably vulnerable to systemic exploitation and abuse. On the other hand, war is an energy-intensive and destructive way for society to settle disputes and establish a dominance hierarchy, but it requires people to adopt common belief systems that are highly inegalitarian and trust-based, making them demonstrably vulnerable to systemic exploitation and abuse. On the other hand, war is an energy intensive and destructive way for society to settle disputes and establish a dominance hierarchy, but it doesn't require people to adopt a common belief system. And it's also egalitarian and zero trust, making it practically invulnerable to systemic exploitation and abuse. These are the trade-offs that are weighed when settling policy disputes. Understanding the systemic differences and trade-offs between war and law helps explain why the application of physical power is so effective at restoring law and order when rules-based societies inevitably become dysfunctional. Rulers who exploit rules of law can be compelled to stop using physical power in what's often called a revolution. Called revolution. Participants who can't be trusted to follow the rules can be compelled to follow them using physical power. It's often called enforcement. In what's often called enforcement. Outsiders who don't sympathize with the rules can be compelled to sympathize with them using physical power. It's what's called, it's what's often called national strategic defense. Whenever laws become dysfunctional, the cure appears to be the same for each affliction. Keep projecting increasing amounts of physical power in increasingly clever ways until symptoms improve. As energy efficient and peaceful as it would be to remedy the exploitation, abuse, and neglect of laws using courts of law, it clearly doesn't work in all cases else there would be no war in the first place. A great deal of evidence suggests that sign-in policy is a far less effective way to fix the dysfunctional societies. Rather than, I would imagine it should be, applying brute force physical power. See the 1938 Munich Agreement for one of countless examples from history.